Good morning, everybody. Mike Makniak here from Family Empowerment Now, where you can join our network at myfenow.com. Uh, be part of our growing community of folks who are involved with the treatment of the mental illness and, and concerned with its impact on the family. I want you to know that I did not forget about you yesterday. I did shoot a video and I was using Facebook's trimming editing um, tool and for some reason it got all hung up and it never published and then it got completely lost. So here I am making up for it, I guess. Uh, what I was talking about yesterday was the ongoing debate that comes up very often uh, and, and this sort of stays with that tr uh, tough love theme that I had mentioned a few days ago where when you have somebody who's highly addicted to substances and it doesn't matter what kind of substances they are, they very often will really make demands on the service system to give them medications, legal medications, that will substitute for the illicit drug, alcohol, whatever it may be, that um, they are craving and that they're addicted, addicted to. Um, and recently I had a doctor that I was talking to about this who said, not on his watch. Uh, when somebody's in the hospital and they are demanding that he prescribe them um, you know, some kind of opioid or some kind of, um, you know, any kind of addicted substance. He is very, very reluctant to do it. In fact, he works very hard to wean them off of whatever prescriptions they may have been on in the community. Now, naturally, this really gets the, the client slash patient upset, but, you know, his belief is this is his, his, his oath and his, his duty to do it. And um, it just raises a bunch of issues because it puts him sort of at, at war with his client when he's trying to do the best thing for that patient um, and the patient of course is mad and and and, and uh, doesn't want to cooperate with him so it's it's a challenge um, I mean is his is his motivation to hurt the patient no and is and is what he's doing correct probably uh, but what happens when that patient then leaves the hospital and is back in the community, um, you know, looking for illicit substances again? It's, it's, a, it's a big debate. It goes on and on. And there's no simple answer to it. You know, this guy had a very sound reasoning for uh, why he was prescribing the way he was. And in fact, he even said that uh, this particular patient was exhibiting no symptoms of withdrawal, uh, was sleeping nine hours a night, and was uh, doing just fine. And because this patient was not exhibiting any psychosis uh, while in the in the um, psych unit, uh, he was also taking a look at whether or not the patient needed psych meds, uh, which you know turns everything on its ear again with regard to community treatment and um, where where the community-based providers may have in their minds made great strides and found the perfect uh, medication cocktail. So it's, it's, I just want to make you guys aware that these kind of debates and these kind of issues happen all the time in the um, inpatient and outpatient settings and uh, it's, it's a struggle. So you have to look at it from various lenses and understand the motivation behind the actions of some of these providers. Um, it's not just as black and white as we want to think it is. So, you know, give that some thought. And if you have, uh, you know, family members or loved ones who are experiencing similar uh, circumstances, let me know. I'm interested in hearing your take on it and uh, their take on it, frankly. Um, anyway, so with that, I'll sign off. Remember, join us at myfenow.com and become part of our growing community of support. Thanks again. I'll see you all tomorrow.